There are three kinds of fitna that Allah talks about in the Quran. One kind is from Allah Himself. The easiest example of that for you to remember is what Allah says about Musa alayhi salam. When Musa alayhi salam spoke with him on the mountain, Allah told him, وَفَتَنَّاكَ فُتُونَ We tested you multiple times. We put you in fitna multiple times. When he was born, the order was to kill all the babies. Even as a baby, he was put in fitna. He was in a fitna when he was in the basket that could have drowned. He was in a fitna when he was being raised in the house of Fir'aun. He was in a fitna when he had to hide his mother's true identity. He was in a fitna when he had to escape Egypt. He was in a fitna when he couldn't go back to Egypt and when he almost died of dehydration. All of these were fitna. So you would think Allah does this for believers. But Allah also mentions this for Fir'aun. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ We put the people of Fir'aun and the lineage, the descendants of Fir'aun also in fitna. So now we're learning when Allah executes a fitna, He doesn't just do this for believers and doesn't just do this for disbelievers, it's for everybody. Anybody can be put through fitna. So Muslims don't have a simplistic understanding of difficulties or tests or trials in this life. So we don't say, how come good people are having difficult time and how come bad people are having a good time? I don't get it. People who say that must not have studied the Quran. People who say that would not have learned لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ One category was when Allah puts you in fitna. The second category is when people put you in fitna. Like رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُ When people put you in difficulty, when people persecute believers, when people attack believers, when people wrong, when people oppress other people, that's the second kind of fitna Allah describes in the Qur'an. There's the fitna Allah puts you in, there's the fitna people put you in. And then there's the third category, the fitna I put myself in. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ Allah says, you put yourselves in fitna. Now what Allah describes in the Qur'an then is how people get, when they have weak faith, what happens to them? Whenever people put them in fitna, جَعَلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَذَابِ اللَّهِ This person takes the fitna that people put him in, people are doing something wrong to you, people are doing something messed up, and then you convert that in your head. Why is Allah letting this happen? This must be Allah punishing me. So you confuse the fitna of people with the adab of Allah. Everything happens by the will of Allah. We should blame Allah for everything bad that happens. Allah allowing something to happen is not the same as Allah desiring something to happen. Allah allows many things to happen in this world that make Allah angry. Allah in fact gets angry in the Quran. Allah got angry at them. What did the Mufassirun describe here? There's a difference between the Ridha of Allah out of his desire to do something, out of his will, but rather more he allowed it to happen. He in his wisdom decided, I will allow certain things to happen even though he himself is not pleased with those things. He gave human beings that freedom to do things that are displeasing to him. And the first time Allah did this, when He created the human beings, even the angels were confused. Why are you giving the human beings this power to do things that you don't like? Ya Allah, you don't like these things, but you're letting them do these things. How come you're letting them do them? أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَا And Allah Azza wa Jalla said these human beings are created for a much more complex and powerful purpose that even the angels were not yet ready to understand. إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know something you don't know. That's what He told the angels. Now, Allah has given me the freedom to displease him. Allah has given me the freedom to upset him, the freedom to make him angry, the freedom to backbite, the freedom to slander, the freedom to eat haram, the freedom to attack someone else, to hurt someone else, to steal. He's given me that freedom. He's given me the reign to do it. So before I complain about how come this one got away with it and that one got away with it, how come the volume gets away with it? Before we say that, I have to ask myself, what do I get away with? Somebody came to me not too long ago because of what's happening in the world and we all know what's happening in Gaza. May Allah Azza wa Jal help the believers in Gaza and grant the shuhada Jannah and grant their family sabr and give us an ounce of that kind of tawakkul and iman that those people have demonstrated and give them nusrah. But somebody came and asked, how come Allah is letting that happen? How come Allah doesn't just stop it? Because it's a fitna from Allah. How come Allah doesn't just stop it? So the question then becomes, let's think about this reasonably. If you want Allah to stop it, if you want Allah to intervene, should Allah not intervene every time you and I disobey Allah? Where do you draw the line? No, if they're killing people, then Allah should stop. But if they're stealing, that's not so bad. It's okay, Allah doesn't have to intervene yet. Or if you're lying about something, then no, 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 don't force your tongue to say the true thing. No, no, that much control. After some limits, Allah should just stop things. Allah put human beings on this earth and He allowed them to be a fitna for each other. And when we take the fitna that we put each other in, human beings put each other in fitna, and then we say, no, 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 this is Allah's fault. Allah is the one who did this, not the people. That is what's called when you put yourself in fitna, the third one. 
It is from Allah only in that Allah allowed you to be tested. Allah created a situation and allowed you to be tested to see how I'm gonna do, how you're gonna do. That's it. What's the right way to understand that Allah is putting me through fitna? If somebody stole money from me, that person put me in fitna. But Allah let it happen. Allah allowed it to happen. So the question, the final question is, why did Allah allow it to happen? For two reasons. Allah was testing the thief and Allah was testing me. And that person has already failed because they stole. Now the only part left is, what am I going to do? Am I going to pass this test or not? Because there's two different tests. The valim has his own test. The mazlum has his own test. Both of them are being tested. The valim already failed because they did against the will of Allah. But the one who has been wrong, now they have to decide how they're going to react. Are they going to react according to the will of Allah? Or are they going to react against the will of Allah? Allah. Are they going to say, what can I learn from this? How do I respond to this within reason, within what Allah has allowed me to respond to? Does this affect my relationship with Allah Himself or no? And for people, when people have this problem that they want to blame Allah for the crisis that they're going through, I'll tell you, Allah put in our fitrah, He put in human nature. You don't even have to be Muslim to understand this. Allah put in our nature the understanding that actually it is human beings that put each other in difficulty. If you were driving your car right now and some Somebody hit you in the back. Allah protect you. But if that happened, somebody hit you in the back. Immediately, you don't say, Ya Allah, ma hadhi fitna. You look back and say, Hey man, watch where you're, why are you on the phone? Immediately, you blame the guy who hit you. You didn't blame Allah. When something wrong happens to them, they say, Well, it was the will of Allah. What can I do? Qaddal Allah, ma sha'a fa'az. You see? It's a kind of hypocrisy, isn't it? Want to hold others responsible, but not myself. So people philosophize about these things, and they talk about these things, and they put themselves in fitna. And Allah says about people like that, Ala fil fitna ti haven't they already fallen into fitna? Allah did not create me without purpose and no situation that Allah put me in is without a purpose. And every one of those purposes has hikmah in it. People do things, stupid things to each other. But Allah never allows even those stupid things to not have a wise purpose behind them. That's why he's al-hakim. May Allah Azza wa not allow us to become people that become maftun, that become people fallen into fitna, that falsely attribute the tests of Allah for the wrong reasons to people. People do things to each other for sadistic reasons, but Allah only only test me for my own benefit. Right? Allah is going to raise the ranks among you, those who believe and those who've been given knowledge. Allah will raise the ranks. And Allah only raises the ranks by more and more and more tests. So may Allah Azza wa Jal make us understand those tests and be able to live up to the tests that we are going to be facing in our lives.